Hello, and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. So today we're doing the first video for March, which of course we're going to be continuing our Zodiac series. And that means we're going to be drawing Pisces today. So deciding what to do for Pisces as far as like fantasy creatures go, of course Pisces is a fish. I already did Capricorn as a mermaid, so maybe thinking something more along the lines of a bard, siren-esque creature. I know sirens and mermaids are basically splitting hairs, but let's see what we get with the sketch. It's mermaids. I caved. It's just going to be mermaids. And I mean, Pisces is a fish, but interestingly enough, Pisces, the story behind the constellation is actually related to Capricorn's story. So mermaids it is. So let's talk about Pisces. Even though Pisces is the third in our series and is represented between February and March, which are the second and third calendar months of the year, Pisces, the constellation, is actually the last one in the Zodiac series, um, astrologically anyway. This sign is all about water. The word Pisces just means fish and if you speak another language you may be familiar with that already um, such as pesce or if you eat fish you're a pescatarian um, not only is this a water sign and the name Pisces means fish but Pisces ruling planet is Neptune which pulling it back into mythology Neptune as you may or may not know is one of the names of the god of the sea in Greco-Roman mythology, also known as Poseidon, but Neptune. So, actually branching off into myths, so the Pisces constellation, according to constellationguide.com, is of Babylonian origin, which we've actually kind of got a little similar taste of that with the last one, where we kind of crept into Babylonian and Egyptian astrology as well with the influences for Aquarius. Um, getting back on track, sorry about that. So Pisces constellation is of Babylonian origin. The Babylonians saw it as a pair of fish joined by a cord and the constellation is usually associated with the Roman myth of Venus and Cupid who tied themselves with a rope and transformed into fish to escape the monster Typhon. The star Alpha Piscium, also known by the traditional name Alresca, I probably said that wrong because it's an Arabic word and I do not speak Arabic, I'm so sorry, um, which translates to the cord, marks the knot of the rope. The constellation is associated with a similar story in Greek mythology. After the Olympian gods had defeated the Titans and the Giants, Gaia, also known as Mother Earth, and Tartarus, which is where Zeus had imprisoned the Titans. Um, Zeus and Gaia had Typhon. Typhon, as described here, had a hundred dragon's heads and fire blazing in all of his eyes. Gaia sent Typhon to defeat the gods and Pan was the first to see him coming. Which we kind of know where that branches off. So this is where it connects to the Capricorn story. He alerted the other gods and then transformed himself into a goatfish and jumped into the river Euphrates to escape the monster. The goatfish is represented by the constellation Capricornus. The goddess Aphrodite and her son Eros called to the water nymphs for help and jumped into the river. In one version of the legend, two fish came to the rescue and carried Aphrodite and Eros on their backs to safety. In another version, the mother and son were themselves transformed into fish. And so that's what I have this part represented here. Um, these two mermaids are actually supposed to represent Aphrodite and her son. And then of course, the joining of the hands is kind of symbolic of the knot binding them together, but also alludes to what I could find as far as um, Pisces nature. Um, they tend to be empathetic and very caring in that sort of quiet, patient personality, um, which again, I don't ascribe to astrology, but my dad is a Pisces and that is his personality to a T. Um, so 
I guess there may, may or may not be something to be said about it. But so that's the myth behind Pisces and how this constellation came to be. Other factors that went into this representation of Pisces because as far as design choice it's not just about the constellation I'm also of course pulling in elements from the birth flower and the birth stone so March's birth flower is the daffodil and the daffodil represents rebirth and new beginning and is pretty much synonymous with spring even though spring doesn't start until Pisces season is over but because it's for March, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so their botanical name is actually Narcissus, which is very appropriate because if you guys are Greco-Roman nerds like I am, you'll recognize that name um, with the legend of Narcissus who loved his reflection so much, he fell into a pool and then he died and he became the flower, the daffodil, which was named after him. Anyway, um, daffodils are also known as the Lent Lily, lore connecting the daffodil to not only a sign of winter's end, but a lucky emblem of the future and prosperity is found throughout the world. In Wales, it's said if you spot the first daffodil of the season, your next 12 months will be filled with wealth. And the Chinese legend has that if a daffodil bulb is forced to bloom during the new year, it will bring good luck to your home. However, always remember to present daffodils in a bunch. The same legends that associate this cheerful flower with good fortune also say that if you present a single daffodil bloom, it can foretell of misfortune. So, always give your flowers in bunches, boys and girls. And the last element of this drawing is, of course, March's birthstone, which is the aquamarine. Now, I really had to do a little digging to find some unbiased aquamarine meaning slash history because a lot of websites I went to just went straight into Christology. Not that kind of Christology, the other Christology. Anyway. Aquamarine is a splendid blue gemstone whose name originates from the Italian word for seawater. It embodies the splendor of the sea. It's a member of the Beryl family, and Aquamarine is a sister to the Emerald, which is personally my favorite gemstone because it's my birthstone. Anyway, it can be found in a range of pale blue hues and aqua green colors. Legends refer to Aquamarine as the treasure of Atlantis. There is much lore about the aquamarine stone. For instance, the Romans believed that if a frog were carved into an aquamarine stone, it would reconcile enemies to make them friends. The Greeks and Romans revered the aquamarine as a sailor's stone of protection and was commonly worn to ensure a safe and prosperous passage across stormy seas. The Sumerians, Egyptians, and Hebrews also admired and valued aquamarine gemstones as a typical precious stone. Belief in aquamarine's powers of revelation was strong during the Middle Ages, and it was common to carve gazing balls for fortune-telling or to suspend an aquamarine crystal on a string over a bowl of water in order to divine messages as the stone disturbed the surface or touched letters drawn on the bowl's rim. So kind of like an early Ouija board situation there. As far as aquamarine's metaphysical properties, in the language of gemstones, aquamarine represents happiness, hope, and everlasting youth. In ancient times, aquamarine was brought to protect those at sea, as mentioned before, and is believed to make sailors fearless and safe from their adversaries on open waters. As far back as 480 BC, aquamarine was considered to be the treasure of the mermaids because its ability to protect increased when immersed in water. Today, Aquamarine is still thought to bring protection to those at sea and is a popular gift among ocean travelers. On land, it is believed to have soothing effects on couples, helping them to work through their differences and ensure a long and happy marriage. It is also considered to be the stone of courage and preparedness and is believed to help maintain balance and order. Aquamarine is often used as a good luck stone, thought to bring peace and joy, love and happiness to those who wear it. 
there's an energizing quality to aquamarine that brings harmony and balance and if you dream of aquamarine it is said that you will make new friends and wearing earrings of aquamarine are often thought to bring love and affection into your life so that's the lore behind pisces and a little bit of uh information behind march's birth elements of the daffodil for its birth flower and the aquamarine as its birthstone i know i didn't do as much in-depth uh situational research for the last two but i really do enjoy doing this kind of like i don't want to keep calling it like myth and lore because those have like some sticky connotations with modern language but i like doing research into the meaning of flowers and gemstones and it's just like you know it's cool bits of trivia that i can share with you guys while i'm doing this video So for now, we're going to call it a day and I'll see you guys next time. Actually, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the first day of March of Robots. But in the meantime, see you next time and have a weird day.